The most common topic we get asked about when we talk about our house build is money. The second most common is the framing. We decided to wood frame the structure of our house and workshop, and I'm gonna show you the entire process start to finish. I'm Alicia. And I'm Bryce. And we are building a modern house. We're trying. Hopefully building a modern house. <laughs> we want a cool contemporary house and we need a workshop, but we have an impossible budget. So that means we have to get really creative and be prepared to roll up our sleeves and do some of the work ourselves. It'll be hard, but it will be worth it. This video is brought to you by DAP Products, View Rail, and presenting sponsor, Simpson Strong Tie. About a week after our concrete foundations were poured, we woke up very early to the sweet sound of a truck delivering lumber to our site. The idea was to get our detached workshop up first. That way we could start using it and storing materials while we worked on the house. Framing is typically one of the highest expenses out of a home build project. So we knew this was a place where we could save a lot of money by doing some of the labor ourselves. My husband Bryce was actually a professional framer for about 12 years. But me on the other hand, besides a few remodeling projects, I haven't done much framing. Bryce taught me that whenever possible, you want to assemble your walls flat on the slab in front of the wall. Once the wall is completely framed with all your window and door openings, then you stand the wall up and attach it to the stem. Our workshop is 30 feet wide and 40 feet deep, which is a good size, but the real challenge comes in the wall height. The structure is designed with a single slope mono pitch roof. The lower wall is a little over 12 feet and the opposite wall on the west side of the building is over 18 feet tall. We knew we were gonna need some help setting these extra long and tall walls. So to be the most efficient we could while just the two of us were working, we decided to build walls on top of each other. And then later when we have more manpower, we could lift the walls up and flip them into place one by one. I'm kind of obsessed with natural light, so unlike most workshops, we actually designed ours to have seven large, four foot by five foot tall windows. With spans that large, we had to include an oversized beam over the header of the window to hold the load of the roof and the rest of those tall walls. We started framing a couple of weekends ago, and last weekend we were out of town for one day. Yep, one day to go look at cabinets in Las Vegas. And when we got back, my father-in-law and his crew were awesome and they, they stood the back three walls of the shop. Mm -hmm. Although coming home to a halfway built workshop was amazing, I really wish I would have been able to get some video of the first walls going up. Early in the morning, the same day we got back, the crew came over and helped us stand the front wall of the shop as well. As soon as the walls went up, we needed to anchor them to the concrete stem of the foundation. There's several different types of mechanical fasteners you can use for this application, but we decided to use Simpson Strong Tie Titan HD screw anchors. Okay, so we had these bolts sticking up out of our stem wall to anchor our bottom plate to. Why did we need to have more anchors? Why did we use the Titans? Well, the reason we have the Titans is these J bolts are cast into the concrete and they just put them at an even increment throughout the slab. But there's gonna be breaks in your bottom plate throughout the house because the, the material's just not long enough to go the full length of the wall. And when you mean a break, you mean like a seam where two yep. pieces of plate Two separate together. pieces of plate coming together. So, but you have to have an anchor within 12 inches of any seam. So what you do is you come back in after the fact and you run these in as your anchor these are called a post-installed anchor. The application is pretty straightforward. I used a hammer drill to drill through the bottom plate into the stem, and then using an impact wrench, I installed the anchors. We added a few temporary braces to help hold the walls up, and then the next day, it was time for the roof. The simplest way to achieve that single mono pitch slope was to use TJI engineered joists instead of trusses. Before lifting the joists into place, we added some hangers so that we could prepare for an even overhang on the sides and back. 
My father-in-law is our general contractor and we are really lucky to have access to a large forklift. Using the forklift helped us get the joists all the way up to that 18 foot wall without having to rent a crane or to do it by hand. Even with the forklift helping, we still had to climb on top of the walls, grab the joist and move it into place on top of the top plate. Once all the joists were in place, we temporarily braced them together before moving on to the shear and siding. We squared up the walls and made sure that everything was nice and plumb. We then added half inch OSB shear to all the exterior walls. Next, it was time to climb up and sheet the roof. When I was standing about 20 feet up in the air, I was really glad that the shop only has a 212 low slope pitch roof. The last part of the framing was to install the rest of the hardware. Securing the STHD strap tie hold downs creates a strong mechanical connection between the concrete foundation and the wood framed walls. Our plans engineer required that we added H25 hurricane ties to the intersection of the walls and the ceiling joists. And finally, we added straps to the headers above the garage door openings. In about four weeks, working only nights and weekends, the two of us were able to frame our dream shop. Okay, time to move on to the house. We contracted with my father-in-law to use his framing crew, but they were super delayed. So Bryce and I just got started framing the house ourselves. Guess what day it is. It is framing day. Well, framing the house day. Yeah. We've done some framing days already on the shop. Quite a few actually. So we are done framing the shop. Yeah. And the way that our permit is, it, the shop since it's detached and the main house actually have separate permits. So we can call for strap and shear, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Strap and shear. We can call for strap and, strap and shear inspection on the <laughs> shop and have it inspected while we continue to work on the house. Yep. The goal is to get at least one wall up today, right? Yep, we'll see if we can get one wall up today. We got two of the shorter walls framed and then there has been a development on the house. Yes, things are moving a little quicker now. Much quicker. We finally have a framing crew. Yes, after <laughs> so uh, excited. months of, about a month of trying to, to get a framing crew out there, thanks to weather delays and other things, we finally got some guys out here. Right, we, we always knew we were gonna hire a crew, but they've been delayed and so Bryce and I have just been doing it ourselves and yeah. now we don't have to anymore. So, uh, but the, the scary part is, is that we don't have it in our budget well, to have the framers, but they kind of a necessary evil. Right. So we're going to have to just pay out of our savings, out of our pocket and what we are earning um, to be able to pay for our labor, which is scary, but we talked about it and we decided it's definitely necessary. Yeah. As you can see, they started setting those great yeah. big tall walls and that would have been really difficult to do with just you and I. Uh, so we're going to have them for at least about a, week. about a week or so yeah. they're going to get the walls up we're going to work with them we'll get the roof set and the trusses set and then once the majority of the structure is up bryce and i can take over again and do mm -hmm. some of the little interior stuff yeah we can do all the pickup work yep so. the experienced framing crew was able to achieve in just a couple of days what it took bryce and i weeks to accomplish typically on most structures you want to set the exterior walls first the design of our home is kind of unique where the interior walls are actually the tallest. If we had built and set the exterior walls first, there would have been no room on the slab to construct and lift the taller interior walls. We had a couple of spots in the entryway where we needed to install a few isolated posts. I attached the standoff post pastes using more Titan HD screw anchors, and then Bryce had to King Kong the posts into place. Yeah. 
We added some Simpson Strong Tie truss hangers and prepared for the second floor. The second floor only extends over the kitchen and dining room, but that's a really important area and I wanted to make sure that there was zero squeaking. Bryce and a couple of the framers applied DAP Dynagrip subfloor adhesive to the tops of the floor joists before lowering one and one eighth inch thick sheets of decking. There's a few techniques that we are going to use as we move forward to make sure that our second story isn't too noisy. One of those was to use quick drive screws instead of nails, and the others I'll talk about in upcoming episodes. As part of the crew worked on the second story, a couple of framers began to shear the lower nine foot walls. Can I get you some bowling pins? It's much easier with a round. Hey, I had that one. Sure you did. Once all the lower walls were sheared, it was time to bring in the trusses. As you saw in episode one of the series, the design of our home is kind of complicated with lots of different roof lines. There were some sections where the forklift could bring the trusses all the way to the top of the wall. And other areas, like over the living room where the roof was almost flat, where the trusses needed to be moved into place by hand. After setting trusses, the crew helped us sheet about half the roof, and then it was time for them to move on. From then on, it was just Bryce and I to finish up the rest by ourselves. Even with experienced framers, nothing's ever perfect. And there were a couple of walls that we needed to straighten and a couple of headers that we needed to shave down. We also changed our mind on a couple of small design choices and needed to move some walls. On a quick walkthrough of the entryway, you might notice something's missing. There is currently a big open spot where stairs normally would be framed. I'll be happy when that ladder goes away. We are just about done. Yay! Yeah. So the reason why the stairs are not framed yet is because we are not just doing your run-of-the-mill wood stairs like everybody else does. We are getting a really cool stair system from ViewRail in just a few weeks. So the stair system that we're going to use is called Flight. It's by ViewRail. And what's really cool about it is instead of using conventional horses or wood stringers that carry the steps, usually you'd have two or three of them. We're going to have one steel one that runs down the middle of the stairs. Mono stringer. It's going to look super cool. I am so excited. When we started to design this house, there were like two things that were on top of my wish list. And one of them was having an open staircase. I love the look of floating stairs metal stairs, open stairs, just stairs in general. And that was something that I am so excited we get to incorporate. So in the original design of the home, this window did not exist. But knowing that we were gonna go with the flight system, we wanted to take advantage as much as possible of the open stair system and bring more light into the house, especially through the stairs. So hence, another window. <laughs> I am so excited by that. Hey, I fit. I didn't fall down. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Wow, you made it through a three foot by four foot window without falling. Good job. I'm not the most graceful. <laughs> this is where it's starting to get really exciting. It actually looks like a house now. I'm going to cut to the chase right away and let you know that we are completely over budget, like terrifyingly way ridiculously over budget. 
I mentioned in episode one how we came up with the estimated numbers for each of our trades. Basically, my in-laws had recently built right next door, so we used their price per square foot to calculate how much things were going to cost on our project. Using that estimate, we calculated that our framing should cost around $31,000. Kind of like when it came to concrete, we shopped around and no matter what we did, our framing package from the lumber supply was just way, way higher than we expected. The lumber package, or basically all the materials that we needed from the lumber yard, came in over $28,000. And on top of that, we then had our engineered trusses, which were just under $10,000 themselves. So just the raw materials alone were about $7,000 over budget, and that didn't include any labor. As I mentioned previously, with these giant walls inside the house, it would have been really, really difficult, if not impossible, for just Bryce and I to frame by ourselves. We really did need a little bit of extra manpower, and so we knew we were gonna have to come up with the money for some labor somewhere. Having our full framing crew for around eight days cost us just shy of $10,000. So 38,000 came out of our construction loan and the other 10,000 came out of our pockets. Including the amount that we paid for labor out of pocket, our framing was around $48,000. So that's $17,000 over what we estimated. So at this point, we have drawn about $74,000 from the construction loan and paid about 29,000 out of pocket. There were a couple of reasons why our lumber package was much more than my in-laws who had built just a few months before us. One very small contributing factor is that material, especially plywood, had gone up in price. The biggest reason was because of the style of our home, we had a lot of open spans, a lot of big windows, and those require very large beams, which are expensive. In a more traditional style house with smaller and fewer windows, you would be mostly using dimensional lumber instead of those more expensive heavy duty beams over every window. Needless to say, we are terrified right now. We have way blown our contingency budget already and we are really scared that if all of our bids keep coming in this much over budget, we don't know how we're gonna finish this house. At this point, we are like $32,000 over budget, which is more than 10% over the highest amount we can borrow. We are panicking and trying to save money anywhere we can, so we're getting really aggressive with the estimates we're getting from our subcontractors, and we've also decided we're gonna have to just do more of the labor ourselves. In the next episode, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that we tackled ourselves, including the roof. If you're curious about the design and budget of the house we're building, make sure you check out this video. If you like other types of DIY videos, make sure you check out this one. There's still a lot more fun and exciting work to do on the house, so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any updates. Make sure to leave any questions you might have in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.